Hello. Sorry we had connection problems this morning, but uh, we're good to go now. This is uh, Spaghetti Westerns podcast. This is uh, Tom Betts, your host, and this is season three, episode 18, number 83. Uh, today we'll continue our investigation into the early films of the Spaghetti Western, history of the Spaghetti Western. We're also going to talk about whatever became of the Wilder Brothers. Uh, Who are those guys? We'll talk about Luciano Rossi. Film of the week is going to be The Mercenary. Then we have a CD of the week, autograph of the week, book of the week, and then we'll wrap things up with the uh, weekly news. So let's get going. Uh, History of the Spaghetti Western. We're going to talk about The Terrible Sheriff. This is a 1962 Italian-Spanish co-production directed by Antonio Momplet and Alberto De Martino. Um, Story is by Mario Guerrera and Victor Vigi. Screenplay by Mario Guerrera, Ruggiero Macari, Jose Malorchi, Giulio Scarnici, Vittorio Scolo, Scola, and, and Vittorio Vigi. I mentioned before when they have this many screenwriters, it's usually not a very good movie, and uh, this is a prime example of it. Anyway, the cinematography is by Ricardo Torres, Carlo Di Palma, and Dario Di Palma. It's an Eastman color. Music is by Manuel Parada, Gianni Ferrio, and Franco Paisano. So it must have had a Spanish musical track and an Italian musical track. That's what usually happens when you've got a Spanish composer and an Italian composer listed as the uh, music composers. Anyways, it runs 80 minutes, so it's not a full-length film. The film stars Walter Chiari as Bull Bullivan, Raimondo Vianello as Jonathan Bullivan, Aroldo Thierry as Mayor Fats, Missouri, Licia Calderon as Suzanne, Antonio Molina Rojo, who we covered a few weeks ago, as Smith, Others in the cast that you might recognize or play a prominent part of Maria Silva as Clementine, Felix Fernandez as Little Barnum, Angela Pia as Mrs. Barnum. Some recognizable names might be Jose Villasante as Jimmy De La Rosa. Fernando Hilbeck always comes up in spaghetti westerns, especially the Spanish ones, as Black Boy. Rafael Luis Calvo as Tornado, Claude Marshall as Bailarin, Alfonso Rojas as the Dice Croupier, Zandas Bolas as the wa- Wagon Loader, Marua Tomeo as the Wagon Loader's wife, Jose Villasante as a bandit, and Roman Arizanavarata as a townsman. Okay, the story goes as such. The brothers Bull and Jonathan Bullivan again played by Walter Chiari and Raimondo Vianello, survive a lynching by a group of blacks who have found them cheating at cards. After a long trek, the two arrive in Golden City, which is in the hands of a group of outlaws led by the mayor, Fats Missouri, played by Aroldo Thierry, a shady individual that hides under the mask of illegality. Along with the owner of the saloon and with the collaboration of Black Boy, played by Fernando Hilbeck, Fats Missouri is able to terrorize the inhabitants of Golden City to the point that everyone has decided to sell their land, houses, and farms for very little money and move out of the territory. Of course, the land, houses, and farms were bought secretly by Fats and his cronies. The Bullivan brothers, having just arrived in town, they meet the two sisters, Suzanne, played by Licia Calderon, and Clementine, played by Maria Silva, and they fall in love and soon being hungry, have a hearty chicken dinner. In reality, the chicken had been treated with a special energy tonic by a little Barnum, played by Felix Fernandez, an organizer of the cock, of cockfights. This makes the Bullivans practically invincible and full of energy. Among their following adventures, the two brothers managed to vanquish the gang of criminals but the brothers Bullivan prefer to leave Golden City in search of new adventures accompanied by Suzanne and Clementine. So we've seen this story before where there's a special tonic or someone gets bumped on the head and they become a superhero. This is no exception in one of the earlier 
uh, standards of this. Uh, what did I say last week about having more than one or two riders usually ended in disaster? This is an example of that, which I said before. So another Italian comedy Western filmed in Spain, it's average at best. It's an often used story formula of two incompetent drifters who end up eating a chicken filled with super energy formula and become invincible defenders of the law and order. When they become out of their stupor, they return to the cowards that they really are. So we'll see this plot appear over the years in several films of the genre. Uh, the film was filmed in Golden City in Hoyo de Manza Manzaneros, north of Madrid. It's where the Fistful of Dollars town site was. Uh, Bull Bullivan is played by Walter Chiari, a regular in these early Spanish, Italian spaghetti westerns. We've covered him several times. An Italian comedian, he was born in Verona, Italy in 1924 and died in Milan in 1991 at the age of 67. He appeared in six other spaghetti westerns. Bull, or Jonathan Bullivan, Bull's brother, is played by Raimondo Vianello who we also covered last week when he co-starred The Magnificent Three. He was an Italian comedian born in Rome in 1922 and died in Milan in 2010 at the age of 87. He also appeared in six spaghetti westerns. Mayor Fest, Missouri, was played by Aroldo Thierry, who was born in Calabria, Italy, on August 28, 1917. He was the son of writer Vincenzo Thierry, and he specialized in roles of jealous, irascible, nervous boyfriends in over 100 films. He appeared also in six spaghetti westerns and died in Rome on December 28, 2006. Suzanne was played by Licia Calderon, born Alicio Palacios Calderon in November 5, 1933 in Alicante, Spain. She appeared in over 35 films and TV shows beginning in 1956. She was married to the actor Jesus Puente and appeared in 17 Spaghetti Westerns. Clementine was played by Maria Silva, who was born Maria Jesus Marin Rodriguez on August 16, 1941 in Palencia, Spain. She appeared in over 75 films since 1959 and is still with us today. Okay, now moving on, we'll cover whatever became of or whatever happened to. Okay, today we have the Wilder Brothers. The Wilder Brothers were a musical duo consisting of John Irison, who sang and played, played bass guitar, and Wayne Parham, who sang and played lead guitar. They recorded seven main theme songs during the Spaghetti Western era. Irison was born John Belfar Irison on September 24, 1937 in Smithport, North Carolina. He was sometimes credited as John Belfour. Parham was born Wayne Lamar Parham on October 19, 1936 in Colbert, Georgia. They first met while working together on the Stephen Foster story in Bardstown, Kentucky along with Viral Skeets Pennington, and they formed a fork trio called the Hunters. They began their professional career on the road singing for then-Governor Nelson Rockefeller in his campaign for President of the United States. After working with Rockefeller, the Hunters returned to New York City where they performed for a record-breaking eight weeks at Radio City Music Hall. John and Wayne received an RCA record contract and moved to Rome, Italy during the mid-1960s. They would perform in Florence and Rome as well as working in the Italian film industry where they were known as the Wilder Brothers, composing the score for the film The Cold Killer. Italian title was UC Devo Alfredo and music for Westerns Italian style, an American television documentary about Italian Westerns. The duo opened a night spot called the Red Banjo in Rome where they sang nightly as John and Wayne. The place was located on the Via Veneto across the street from the American Embassy. It became a regular hangout for many American actors who were in Rome at the time filming westerns, crime films, and dramas. On leaving Italy in the mid-1970s, the duo split up and went their own ways. John returned to New York 
and the clubs he performed in during the 60s, but it wasn't the same. When his old singing partner, Vero Pennington, invited him to play at the Ramada Inn on North Broadway in Lexington, Kentucky, he felt the pull of the place that reminded him of his roots and knew it was time to leave the lights of New York City. He remained in Lexington for the rest of his life, Mary, Mary and Carol Lutz in 1976. He would perform on just about every stage available in central Kentucky, from benefit concerts for Nathaniel Mission to hotel ballrooms and lounges. He worked in local television, hosting a TV Western movie show on WKYT, where he played a grizzled prospector whose sidekick was a moving, hopping burlap sack. He wrote and produced countless jingles and scores for local and national clients, including General Electric and Tucky Fried Chicken. He recorded an album of original songs, John Irison in Lexington, and his song, I Always Wanted to Sing in Renfro Valley, was covered by the Osborne Brothers. John passed away at the age of 79 in Lexington, Kentucky on April 6, 2016. Wayne returned to Atlanta, Georgia and co-starred Wayne David Productions. He won an Emmy Award for his musical score for a television film called On Le Conte at 92, about a 92-year-old man who claimed, climbed the tallest mountain in the Smoky Mountains. He also toured as a guitarist with country music singer Bill Anderson. In 1981, he signed an eight-year contract with PBS for composing music for the series Soup to Nuts. He was a stand-in for singer Kenny Rogers in the film Six Pack, 1982. Parham operated Triangle Records, Wayne Parham Productions, and was a partner with Dick Dickerson on MCA Records. He was inducted into the Rockability Billy Hall of Fame before his death in DeKalb, Georgia, at the age of 71 on July 31st, 2007. Uh, let me grab this first page here, and we'll go over the westerns that the Wilder brothers, where is it? Okay, the Wilder brothers sang the song Golden Gun for the Man Who Came to Kill, 1965. They also sang the main song for He, he Wore a Silver Star, Pickin' and Grinnin' and Lovely Girl, and also welcome song for the Cold Killer. Their probably best known song was Johnny Yuma and That Silent Man for Johnny Yuma, 1966, starring Mark Damon. They also sang this lead song, Lanky Fellow, for A Taste for Killing. Hogtied for the 1967 song, uh, movie, The Son of Django. They also sing in Western Italian style 68. They sing O Marie, Wanted Dead or Alive. Bound for Higher Ground, under the pseudonym of John and Wayne. They're also seen singing in the red banjo. Their last song was Monty and Ted in Sundance Cassidy and Butch and Cassidy in 1969. Okay, moving along, we're going to talk about who are those guys. Ah. Okay, who are those guys? We're going to talk about Luciano Rossi. Most of you may not say may say who's Luciano Rossi, but you'll recognize him when we post pictures. Luciano Rossi Romano was born in Rome on November 28, 1934. After high school, he worked in an import export company while dreaming of becoming an actor. He quit his job and went to Chinachito Studios and hung around there on a daily basis, hoping to be hired as an extra. His slim physique and blonde hair was recognized, which made him stand out and look more like a foreigner. He was hired to play a German soldier in a war film, Ten, Ita Ten Italians for One German, 1962, in an uncredited role as a German soldier. Suffering from a slight case of muscular dystrophy, which caused him to slouch and this was exaggerated for roles in horror films. Sergio Salima liked his slim, long fingers, which made him perfect fit for a gunslinger. 
He attended the Studio della Arte Scanich from 1966 to 1967. He was a leading stage actor for the Teatro de Novecento. Although his family wanted him to become a medical doctor, Luciano pursued his career as an actor. He was easy to work with and eager to learn, which opened doors for him more and more as a character actor in character actor roles. Although his name never became a household word, he was satisfied with his career as he found steady work and was reject, respected by the other actors he worked with, including Anthony Quinn and Terrence Hill and Bud Spencer. Rossi appeared in 28 Westerns, some of them the best of the genre and awful, also all, often acted under pseudonyms Lou Camante, Ruck, Ro, Luck Ross, Edward or Edwin Ross, and Thomas Clay. He never burst through and became a major star, but, but by the middle 1970s, he lived in a state of depression. This resulted in weight gain. He sought the help of a physician who prescribed weight loss medication, which only added to his declining health problems. The medication and his heavy drink, drinking addiction also added to his problems. By the late 1980s, he was totally consumed by his illness and rumors circulated that he had been institutionalized or was living as a tramp. In reality, he had retired and moved back home to be with his elderly mother. His nephew, Alessandro, was a medical doctor and attended to him his last 15 years of his life. Luciano suffered from anxiety, depression, osteoporosis, osteoporosis as well as muscular dystrophy. After his mother's death, he moved back to Rome where he lived with family members who took care of him. All but forgotten by his fellow actors, he died on May 29, 2005 at the age of 70. Some of his better known roles are as a clan member in Django, 1965. He was in the Trampers in 1966. He played Jean Paul in 1967, Run Man Run, as Edwin G. Ross. Yankee Jack in 67, and Viva Django as Edward G. Ross. Played a bounty killer in 1968's The Great Silence. He played Sammy in 1969's Boot Hill. Ignacio in 1969's The Forgotten Pistolero. Luke Jack Hugo Murdoch as Luke Amante in 1969's The Stranger's Gundown. He's a gambler in The Unholy Four in 69. The Wolf, 1970, A Man Called Sledge. Timmy or Timid in 1970's They Call Me Trinity. He's a circus performer, a circus performer in Return of Sabata. You see him in the opening gunfight seat, 1970. Again, he plays Timmy or Timid in They Call Me Trinity, 1970. Uh, he plays Moss in 1972's Death Smith and Johnny Years. And he ends his career in 1974 playing Billy or Bailey in White Man, White Fang to the Rescue. Okay, moving on, we'll discuss our movie of the week. Okay, movie of the week is The Mercenary. Italian title is Il Mercenario. Spanish title has three, uh, Solario para Matar, also El Mercenario, and sometimes posted as Jaguar. In the UK, it was known as a professional gun. Uh, it was also had an English title, Revenge of a Gunfighter, but it was known in the United States as The Mercenary. It was directed by Sergio Carbucci. Story was by Giorgio Arlorio, Franco Salinos. Screenplay was by Ad Adriano Bolzoni, Sergio Carbucci, Sergio Spina, and Lucio Vincenzoni. Cinematography was by Alejandro Bolzoni, I'm sorry, Alejandro Uloa, and was in Technicolor and Technoscope. Music was by both Ennio Morricone and Bruno Nicolai. Stars Franco Nero as Sergio. Sergei Kowalski, Jack Palance as Riccioli, Curly or Curl or Elam. Tony Musante plays Paco Roman. Giovanna Raleigh plays Colomba. Eduardo Fajardo plays Alfonso Garcia. 
Other names you might recognize are Raph Baldazar who plays Mateo, Remo DeAngelos as Hudo, Jose Canaleas as Larkin, Franco Rossell as Studs, Tito Garcia plays a mine foreman, and Lorenzo Robledo pops up as the firing squad captain. The poster states, he sells death to the highest bidder. And the story goes, the film opens with a comedy bullfight in a border town bullring at the introduction of spectator Sergei Kowalski, played by Franco Nero, who narrates the film. Set during the Mexican Revolution, a ruthless and oppressive mine owner, Colonel Alfonso Garcia, played by Eduardo Fajardo, hires Polish mercenary Kowalski to protect seven tons of silver being transported to the U.S. When Kowalski arrives, he discovers the oppressed peasant workers led by Paco Roman, played by Tony Musante, have taken over control of the mine. Always eager to make good on his law losses, Kowalski persuades Roman, who is now in a tight spot with Garcia's army bearing down on him to hire his services. A sadistic homosexual mercenary named Curly, played by Jack Palance, wanting the silver for himself, tries to ambush Bush Kowalski, but Roman thwarts his plans and Curly's henchmen are killed. Kowalski renews his partnership with Roman, and after liberating a town, the bandits are joined by Colomba, played by Giovanna Rally, an idealist whose father was hung for being a revolutionary. While the promise of making Roman as famous as Pancho Villa and the gang rich in exchange for a hefty daily fee plus expenses, Kowalski guides Roman and he earns the reputation of a great revolutionary liberator. Garcia's army, still desperate to capture the bandits and joined by Curley in their search, Kowalski continually increases his financial demands, but Roman, now married to Columba, sees the true importance of the revolution to the Mexican people. Realizing his responsibility for his fellow countrymen, Roman reneges on the deal and takes all Kowalski's money for the great cause. The bandits keep Kowalski tied up as a prisoner, but in a devastating attack by Garcia's army, he escapes. Kowalski tracks Roman to a rodeo where he is hiding out as a clown. Curly also trades him there, and the scene is set for the final showdown. I won't go into that for those who haven't seen the film. Uh, one of the memorable scenes in this is when Nero lights a cigarette with a match he strikes across the laughing teeth of Raph Baldazar. This lighting of his of matches for his cigarettes is an ongoing gag, gag during the rest of the film. Another one is when a lizard is found in the beans of the peons, Musante tells his fellow workers that they must have been given the meat. He turns the tables on Fajardo and makes him eat and swallow the lizard. The duel in the bull ring between Paco and Curly is well staged and one of the most memorable scenes of the genre. Morricone's score is spot on and one of his best of the revolutionary films he scored. Uh, Kowalski keeps raising his, his dues. This is just like uh, Juliana Gemma in A Pistol for Ringo. Uh, this is a must-see for, uh, for all of those who love the genre. As far as those who were in the film, We've talked about Franco Nero before. In fact, um, we did a, a complete episode on him, uh, episode number 31. But he was born Francesco Sparanero in Parma, Italy on November 23rd, 1941. And he's still with us. Uh, Jack Palance, who plays Ricolo, Curly, Curl, or Elam, was born Vladimir Ivanovich Polanuk Jr. on February 8, 1919 in Latimer Mines, Pennsylvania. He was known for playing tough guys and villains and villains and was nominated for three Academy Awards, all for Best Supporting Actor, receiving nominations for his roles in Sudden Fear and Shane, and winning almost 40 years later for his role as Curly in City Slickers. 
I wonder if they got the name Curly from uh, the mercenary. He was the father of actor Cody Palance, who appeared with him in God's Gun in 1975, and Holly Palance, who appeared with him on the TV series Ripley's Believe It or Not, 1983 to 1984. Jack died on November 10, 2006, in Montecito, California, at the age of 87. Paco Roman was played by Tony Musante. He was born Anthony Peter Musante Jr. in Bridgeport, Connecticut on June 30, 1936. He was a film and TV actor best known for his TV series Toma from 1973 to 1974. The series ended after one season because Musante didn't want to get trapped in a TV series. The series was re-released as Beretta, starring Robert Blake in 1975. Musante died on November 26, 2013, at the age of 77. Uh, then we have Colomba, played by Giovanna Rally. Giovanna Rally was born in Rome on January 2, 1935. She made her first film at the age of seven and her theatrical debut at 13. She later won an Astro di Giardento Award as Best Actress in La Fuga, 1964. Rally made two other, or Rally, Rally made two other Euro Westerns, A Taste of Violence with Robert Hussein in 1961, and Canon for Cordoba with George Papard in 1970. She retired from acting in 2015. And last but not least is Alfonso Garcia, played by Eduardo Fajardo. Eduardo Martinez Fajardo was born on August 14, 1924, in Maya, Spain. He was a TV and film actor, both in Spain and Mexico. He appeared in 191 films and TV shows from 1947 to 2002. 37 of these were westerns. He excelled at playing slimy villains. Fajardo was the head of the Spanish Actors Guild, so he knew all the films going on in Spain and usually had the inside track at roles that looked interesting to him. He died in Mexico City on July 4, 2019, at the age of 94. Okay, now we'll talk about or show you Autograph of the Week. Okay, this is on a poster. And this is on a Belgium poster for Today We Kill, Tomorrow We Die. And I, let's see if you can see it up here. There we go. To Tom Betts, best wishes from Brett Halsey, a.k.a. Montgomery Ford. And as you can see in this one, he was, he was Montgomery Ford, is what he went under the alias. And that's our autograph of the week. Next is book of the week. Okay, whatever we came of or who are those guys was Luciano Rossi. There's actually a book out there about him called A Violent Professional, the films of Luciano Rossi. Came out in 2007 by Fab Press. Author is Kirla Janisa. Has 127 pages. The best thing it's in English. Still available on Amazon for 34 bucks, so you can still get it. Well worthwhile. Uh, next we have CD of the week. Okay, CD of the week is Bono, El Bruto, El Cativo, and Loressa De Conti. That's the good, the bad, the ugly, and the big gun down. Uh, composer on both of these was Ennio Morricone. As you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly starred Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cleef, and Eli Wallach. And the big gun down was Lee Van Cleef and Tomas Milian. Uh, this came out in Italy on Vivi Musica. It's number VCDS 7006. Has 24 tracks total, 11 from The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and 13 from The Big Gun Down. Total t listing time is 59 minutes and 17 seconds. It was released in 2008 
Uh, it's available on Amazon, Discogs, and eBay. Value ranges from $6 to 20 bucks. So if you don't have a copy of The Big Gun and The uh, Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, this is a way to get both scores on one CD. Okay, now we'll go into uh, Tom's record or poster vault. I'll show you a couple of posters associated with today's Spaghetti Westerns podcast. <laughs> Okay, let me get this out of the way a little bit. This is the Belgium poster for the Mercenary. Also, we have a British window poster for the Mercenary. And as you can see, they call it a professional gun. And last but not least on that film, we have... Il Mercenario, which is the German poster. Let me get back here a little bit more. Nice artwork on that one. Okay, and now we'll wrap things up with the weekly news. Okay. Weekly news, we have a new German DVD uh, called Die Grossemann, which the Hellbenders, directed by Sergio Carbucci, starring Joseph Cotton, Norma Bengel, Julian Mateos, and Maria Martin. It was released by Koch. Um, it's in English, German, Italian, with German subtitles. It has a running time of 92 minutes. It's a limited edition, square format box with DVD and Blu-ray. Extras include an audio commentary by Troy Howarth, Alex Cox, interview with Ruggiero Diodata, has a photo gallery, trailers, Italian and German credits, also a Super 8 version, a booklet with text by Lars, Lars Johansson and Marco Cook. This came out on May 5th. Uh, also, there's a new U.S. book release called Ride from Hell by author Brett Halsey. Who? Brett Halsey. Independently published. It's in English with 315 pages. Uh, this came out on May 4th. Uh, it's in Brett, in Brett Halsey's exciting sequel to his popular Western novel, West of Hell, Marshal Chris Tracy and his friends Wally Byrne and his friend Wally Byrne set out to California on an assignment to capture or kill an elusive, bloodthirsty Mexican bandit. Their perilous task becomes an unbelievable challenge when they return to Soda Springs, where a wily crook has fleeced the local bank, leaving the town's people in hopeless turmoil. Chris and Wally are forced to deal with double dealing, backstabbing, and unexpected gunfights. On top of everything else, they must help to straighten out the awkward complications of a teenage love affair and faced a looming threat of a brutal Indian uprising. If you read uh, Brett's first book, West of Hell, uh, it was fantastic. We really, I really enjoyed reading it. So this one's got to be up there with it. And last but not least, Enio by Giuseppe Tornatori, dedicated to Morricone, got recognition as best documentary uh, for the director. It's a, for the uh, David Dina Donatello Awards, uh, which the award went to Giuseppe Tornatori. Uh, also, Best Sound. He was given an award for Best Sound for this. Also on this, a career uh, statuette went to Giovanna Rally. And, so, and she says, uh, like, the, in receiving the David Donatello for her career, Raleigh says she started her career right in Chinachita and remembers her love for Rome despite being chaotic and her friendship with Alberto Sorti. He made me laugh. Sometimes we had to repeat the scene because I started laughing and he would say to me, well, what are you doing? Thank you all, she concludes, and dedicates the award to my family who have always supported and always protected me. All right, that wraps up 
this episode of uh, the Spaghetti Westerns podcast. So we'll see you next week. And until then, adios, amigos.